How much does Aston want for this thing? In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to talk about alternatives that you might perhaps consider for replacing an oxygen sensor, a HEGO sensor, a lambda sensor. Uh, they're basically just you know, known as O2 sensors that are used in the Aston Martin V12 engines. So there's a lot of chatter out on the forums uh, about um, people looking for maybe ways to save a few dollars, you know, and well, you know, a lot of Aston parts are made by Ford or Volvo. So, you know, when we figure out uh, essentially the mystery of which part uh, Aston used, it's nice to sort of share that with everybody else. So I thought I would take a serious crack at looking at the O2 sensors. Now, <clears throat> the O2 sensor's job is an important one. It is basically part of the fuel system. Uh, there's an O2 sensor uh, before and after the primary catalyst. The one before is used essentially to monitor the exhaust gas stream for how much oxygen is present in it. And it sends that information back to the fuel injection system to add or remove fuel, make it richer or leaner, um, and continually tune the exact right amount of fuel so you get the perfect stoichiometric ratio of 14.7 to 1 of air to fuel. So, uh, they do a very important job, and the way they do that is that there's a, uh, a really, you know, elaborate special metal sort of sensor in here, and it sends back an electrical signal uh, to the computer. So that signal ranges between 0 volts and 1 volt. So 0.1 volts, uh, just out of interest, is lean. 0.9 volts is rich. And a totally normal, uh, perfect stoichiometric ratio should be a signal of about 0.45 volts. So these are an electronic device and they just send back a simple signal. And uh, I guess in what I'm trying to say, it's also not rocket science. All automotive manufacturers use uh, O2 sensors that work exactly like this. So Aston didn't go out and design themselves a bespoke um, O2 sensor. So these are the O2 sensors out of my 2005 DB9. It's in here, I'm doing my coil packs and I thought I would uh, do a video about my O2 sensors while I had it up on the ramp. And uh, so there's, uh, if we come in for a little bit of a closer look here, there are actually uh, two different color connectors. The blue ones are the, be the ones that are downstream from the catalytic converter. So these are after the air, the exhaust flow goes through the, the cat. The green ones were the ones that came out uh, from upstream of the catalytic converter. And if you think about my um, previous videos, if you've watched the one on how to inspect your primary cats, we actually have eight O2 sensors in the DB9. We have four primary catalytic converters and we have an upstream sensor in front of each one and a downstream sensor after each one. So that's eight sensors total. There's a whole bunch of these in here. Why would you be replacing an O2 sensor? Well, um, there could be a, a lot of reasons, but a lot of times O2 sensors get changed for the wrong reason. Uh, if you have a, a check emission light come on, everyone goes, oh, put in some new O2 sensors. Lots of things can be setting off the emission light and still might, the sensor could be one of those things, but you could have uh, a misfire coming from a bad spark plug, a misfire coming from a bad coil pack, you could have a bad fuel injector, you could have an electrical wiring loom problem where it's you know not reading the signal properly, um, or you could actually have a bad O2 sensor. So this video is not about uh, how to diagnose if your sensor is bad or not, but it is about um, what to do if you've been told to replace them. So. This is the one, uh, this is a green one, so it's an upstream sensor. And I got it out of the car and I was thinking, well, how much would this cost to replace if this was, uh, I just go to the parts book or call my Aston dealer. So if they look this part up, it is $218 each for the upstream ones and $214 each for the downstream ones which is kind of mind blowing. If you do all eight of them, that's $1,700 to do a full set. 
So, um, upon closer inspection though, and uh, cameraman will come in, we won't probably be able to see it, but I'll cut in a photo. Right here, you'll find the Ford logo. And then right there beside it, we're gonna see the exact Ford part number uh, that's on the sensor. And if we, the blue ones have a slightly different part number, but the green ones are also, there is the Ford logo, and there's the Ford part number uh, that follows on behind. These aren't bespoke Aston Martin parts. Aston did not design their own O2 sensor, right? So uh, they went to the Ford parts bin, they picked out one that would, uh, was suitable. It's honestly the same uh, part that's used in the Ford F-150, the Econoline, the Crown Vic, the Ford GT, um, uh, all sorts of Ford cars, literally like 100 different models use this exact sensor. So that's actually a great thing for us. You can now actually go over to uh, you know, third-party websites to look up uh, auto parts. And if you go over to like rockauto.com and put in 2005 Aston Martin DB9 V12, you can get a whole list of third-party aftermarket uh, companies that make O2 sensors. So here's one called Walker that I just got a sample of. And lo and behold, you know, there is the um, a brand new aftermarket sensor. It's got the same thread, uh, basically the same uh, body size, same cable length, and of course, importantly, the same connector. Uh, so this is a direct replace, generic replacement part that you can buy for about $30 from rockauto.com. Now, it dawned on me while I was going through that moment of discovery, well, why wouldn't I maybe just consider checking with Ford? So if you go over to the official Ford parts website, Motorcraft, and put in the part number off the old sensor, what it does is look up the replacement part number, uh, but today it's like 17 years newer now, right? So lo and behold, Ford actually just says, oh yeah, you have these old sensors, you wanna start using a, our new sensor DY1401. And so I ordered these right off of Amazon, but after looking it up over on the Motocraft website, and lo and behold, here is a brand new Ford sensor probably a better design with some improvements compared to the old ones from 17 years ago. And as, as you can see, same threads, uh, same wire colors, uh, connectors white, uh, and, uh, but the exact same style. And uh, Ford also says on their website, oh yeah, this is for use upstream or downstream of the catalyst. Uh, so there's no difference to have so if you put either one of these old original part numbers into the Ford website, it directs you to buy this sensor. So I was like, great, this is probably better than the old ones. Um, and these were $35. So complete generic, 30 bucks. Actual Motorcraft, recommended by Ford, works with Ford ECUs, um, 35 bucks. So I think it's pretty obvious. Um, you know, sometimes if the price is about the same, you know, if it's maybe a buck or two cheaper for the aftermarket, I'm not gonna save the dollar or two, I'm just gonna go with the official Aston part. But you could get eight of these for $240. That's about the price of one of these. So 1,700 bucks or, you know, uh, 240 bucks and use maybe the new improved, even better sensor uh, direct from Ford. I know what I'm gonna be putting into my car. So hopefully you found this information kind of useful. Um, you can of course choose to do whatever you want with your car. I'm sure the generic sensors are gonna work fine if you're somewhere in the world where it's difficult to get any of the other parts. Um, if you're like me, I'm probably gonna go with the uh, Motocraft parts and you can always go with the Aston Martin parts if you're uh, worried about trying to substitute something. So hopefully you found that helpful. Down here, you'll find my companion blog article that'll have links probably to all the different uh, bits and things I talked about today, as well as maybe some of the websites that I referenced. Uh, up here, uh, you'll probably find my next video that's gonna show you how to install the O2 sensors uh, in your car. And down here, if you like receiving videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe. 
And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.